Hello and welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Gottfried Hofmann and this time it's all about ink drops again. You know this, cool motion graphics or graphics design effect. You can't do it all inside Blender, so no need for fish tanks, for ink and cameras. Let's just jump right in and create one of those miracles for ourselves. I'm using Blender 2.77 for this tutorial, but it should also work in earlier versions and of course in later ones as well. Let me start by switching over to the Cycles Render Engine and not deleting the default cube. Instead, I'm gonna scale it up three times as three and use it as a domain for our simulation. So up here in the physics settings, I'm selecting smoke and then domain. And that's it for now. The side effect for adding the domain early is that it's um, actually now wireframe view in the viewport and so we can actually see what's going on inside. And this is where I'm gonna place my emitter at mesh icosphere in this case. Let's scale it down to 0.1. And I want to animate it that it's flying in there from the left. Let me first move it minus 7.5 on the x axis, gx. 7.5 minus. And here I am on frame one. Let me insert a single keyframe up here in the properties panel, right click, insert single keyframe. And then let's go to frame 10, GX 5.5, insert single keyframe again. And this is all we need in regards of animation of this little emitter here, because if you um, look at the animation now, it starts slow, then it gets faster and then it gets slower again. But all we are interested in is the part where it is entering the domain, including subframes that would be this. So these few frames in the end. And if we take a closer look in the graph editor, we see that during those few frames, it's actually slowing down just like an ink drop in water would be slowing down because those Bessier curves are um, created using a lot of quadratic equations put to the stitch together. And the last one, of course, is simply a quadratic slowdown. And this is by chance roughly the same way a drop of ink would slow down when dropped into water. So by chance, we have the perfect animation without changing anything. Let's add a simulation to the drop and that is here smoke flow. Let me turn down the temperature difference to zero because otherwise the smoke would rise and we don't want the ink to rise. It should just move around in the, let's call it a water tank. Then I let me turn on initial velocity because I want the smoke to inherit the speed of our drop. And let me turn up subframes to 32. Because if you look at it from the side, you might notice that here when it's moving through the domain, it's moving quite fast and um, quite far. And without the subframes enabled, we would uh, have one blob of emission here, one here, and then one here. And with subframes, we get a nice straight stream of ink, just like it would be in reality. So very important setting. And one last thing I'd like to do is I'd like to animate the emission so it doesn't keep emitting even when it's standing still. So here I am at frame 10. Let me hover over the surface setting here, I. And then five frames later, let me hit set this to zero, no more emission and hit I again. You could also want to have um, animated the density, but this is also fine. So next thing is let me select the domain and turn on smoke adaptive domain. Very important. If you turn this on, your baking will, time will decrease quite a lot. Your baking will be a lot faster. So always turn this on. And below here in smoke cache, let me select OpenVDB, which is a pretty cool new format that allows us to store things on disk with a lot less size. So if, for example, I noticed when I had a simulation that would take 100 gigabyte of space on the disk, with OpenVDB, it would just take 10. So 
pretty cool new option, but only available in Blender 2.77. Let me also set the end frame to 150. That's just because I noticed that um, on further frames, sometimes the ink starts to leave the domain, which doesn't look good. So let's just keep it safe, play it safe and end it at frame 150. This is what we can say for end here as well. And last thing is of course, baking now. And you can only bake if you have saved your file. So file save. If you didn't, then this is will be grayed out and you have to save first. But I saved, so let me bake. Now when I play back the animation, you'll notice that, yeah, we got our ink drop, but it's just shooting through the domain. And that's basically because there is nothing in the domain it can react to, or nothing there at all. Smoke, for example, reacts to force field. So let's add one and we can add it anywhere we want. So let me click here with the 3D cursor and then shift A, force field turbulence and this will add some turbulence to our smoke to make it more look like as if it has just dropped into the water and everything is moving. And for this, let me set the strength to 10. We need quite a high strength to, for force fields in order to react with smoke. And size 0 0.75. That's just a value that I found plays nicely with a domain size of 3. So if you have a domain of a different size, just um, Try to experiment until you find the right size for your force field. And very important, flow setting should be set to 1, because if you have a flow of 1, the turbulence force field will act more like something is moving in actual water in regards of the turbulence. And that's exactly what we want here. So let me select this one here again. And let's also do a few changes here. First of all, I want less vorticity. Vorticity is basically how likely is it that um, worlds are happening in the smoke, in the simulation. So a high vorticity means a lot of chances that there will be worlds and a low vorticity means the chances are less likely, but the worlds will be bigger. And this is exactly what we want here. We don't want a super duper detailed um, simulation here because this will more or less look like we would have put tons of ink into the water. No. It's just one drop, so vorticity low, and we will get few but large and very pronounced details. Another thing I'd like to turn on is smoke high resolution, but let me set the strength to one. I'm only using the smoke high resolution because I, there is an effect that sometimes happening is that when you have a very high resolution for your um, domain up here in divisions, then it might happen that um, cells disconnect during simulation and smoke high resolution is countering this effect a little bit. But I don't want to see the actual effect of smoke high resolution that is adding fine detail to more or less um, flat surfaces of smoke. And that's why I set the strength to only one. So we don't get the extra detail, but we get the other effect of smoke high resolution. And that's why I also keep the divisions at one. So for an ink drop, so high resolution, turn it on, but only division of one and strength of one. So the last thing I want to change before I can do the final bake is up here, divisions. You can go up to 512 of this, but it totally depends on your RAM. And that's why I'm just using 265 here. Here you see my final bake in the viewport. And it's very thin, so you actually can see a lot and uh, you can see a lot less if you turn up the divisions to the divisions to 512 but you will be able to see everything once we start rendering it in cycles so let me go to compositing and zoom in a little bit i have the domain selected here material nodes use nodes and let me get rid of the diffuse bsdf and instead shader volume absorption now let's connect volume here and volume here. And let me also give this a color like something reddish. And let me switch the device to GPU because since Blender 2.77, you can render smoke on the GPU. And that's what I'm gonna do. And let's also go to a different frame like 75 maybe. This is um, a little smaller, so it will render faster. And then let me go viewport shading 
rendered and you don't see anything because I don't have use nodes enabled. And let me also create a completely white world around it so you can see a lot better that we don't have the smoke at all in our scene. And the reason for this is that we have not yet used any node that gets, gets us the voxel data information from the smoke in our domain. Currently, unfortunately, we do not have a dedicated node for this, but we can use an all-purpose one, and that is input attribute. If I type in density here and connect factor to density, you now see that we actually have the smoke information, but it's not really sick, not really dense. So let me here add converter math and multiply the density by an arbitrary value like maybe 50 and now you see here you have it your cool little ink drop and let me also get rid of this sphere here let me go here to the settings object settings and cycle settings ray visibility camera volume and shadow so now we can still see it in the 3d viewport but not if we set this 3D viewport shading to rendered and of course also not when rendering. And at this point, you could actually already render your ink drop in the old school fashion. It's looking really cool and it's really awesome. But I want to go one step further and also create a modern version of the ink drop. For that, we need uh, another node and that is volume scatter, shader, volume scatter, because all those modern ink drop effects are actually a kind of paint in water that has a lot of very small particles that are scattering the light. And you can combine volume scatter with volume absorption by using shader add shader. So remember, if you want to combine volume absorption and volume scatter, always use the add shader. And now let me also connect the density to our density of the smoke. And the last thing I'd like to do is I want the color for volume scatter to be the same as volume absorption. And for some reason, this is turning completely black. But if I go here to render settings and down here in light path, if I turn up the volume bounces to one, you see that we see it again. And now it's scattering like it's real smoke. And the reason for this is that we have a completely white background and no really strong lamp, like maybe a sun lamp in the scene. And that is where the shadow rays that are cast from the volume are just not working if you have zero bounces. And for this, you can turn on volume to one, or you could also simply use an HDRI for the world background, or you could have changed the lamp type here to sun and made it a lot brighter. Everything would have worked. I took the simplest and easiest route by simply turning up the volume bounces to one. By the way, if you want to know more about this and go really into detail about shadow rays and multiple important sampling and everything cycles, I really advise you to check out the Cycles Encyclopedia, which I will link at the end of this video. And now let's finish off the ink drop effect, because right now it looks more like smoke and not so much like an ink drop. And the reason for this is that we have um, very less lot of parts that are not really dense on the outside and the dense parts are only in the inside. And for the ink drops, the modern ones, it, it's actually looking almost as if they would have a surface. And for this, we can use converter color ramp. And if I move the right stop to the left quite a bit, then you will see that the dense parts will go more and more to the edge of our simulation. And now let's also switch this to ease. And here we have it, a really dense, thick cloud here that's really, really in resampling modern ink drop effects. And there's still one thing that's bothering me, and that is we have banding artifacts. You can hardly see, it, see them here, but you can see them when you run this as an animation, render this as an, as an animation, then you'll see banding artifacts here. And it's also still a little bit too soft for my taste. And we can fix this by increasing the render quality by making the steps smaller we're having here. So 
the steps size of our ray traveling through the volume should become smaller and then those bending artifacts, artifacts here will be gone. You can set the step size up here in volume sampling, heterogeneous step size. And the current value is good, but for this one we need a, a lot smaller one, so let's set it to 0 0.01. And now the bending artifacts here are gone. We have a lot more detail now. And all in all, this is looking way more like ink in water and less like traditional smoke now. We might even increase the, this here a, a little bit again. So we get a sharper edge here. And now this is actually ready to render. It's already looking pretty cool. And now you should have some fun rendering your ink drops. So. This is it. Thank you for watching the entire tutorial. I hope you learned at least something or better more. You learned quite a lot. I'm Gottfried Hofmann. This is planetdiplom.com and please do try this at home.